In Psalms 119, verse 53, you know, David, King David, he said, Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that has forsook your word, your law. David had a holy horror. That's right. Whew. My God, I feel Jesus. He had a holy horror come on him. Why? Because he said, the wicked forsake your words. They forsake your ways, Lord. So King David right here is describing a real horror that gripped his heart. A horror of knowing what would happen to those that forsook God's word in eternity when they leave this world. See, the wicked enter an eternal horror house called hell when they leave this world if Jesus is not Lord of their life. See, many within our culture today, especially during Halloween, are taken in by this fascination with death and horror. Many attend the horror houses on Halloween night expecting a, to be frightened for fun. But the Bible clearly reveres a more, reveals a more serious side about all this horror, whose scary shadows and spirits or of an eternal descent. Hell's horror may be fun now, but the horror of hell in eternity will be anything but fun, my friend. Can you imagine the worst nightmare of your life? Immensely worse, continuing forever, with no exits, no way to escape or leave this hell. According to Luke 16 and 28, hell is a literal place of torment. It's a horror house, an eternal horror house with no exits. Think about it. As taught by Jesus. The word torment in this scripture describes a horror or a fear at its worst and then some. This real dead man described by Jesus in Luke 16, 23 lifts up to his eyes in hell in this eternal horror house called hell. Being in torments of or in horror. Part of his horror in hell was that he could still see and he saw others in Abraham's bosom afar off being comforted, mainly like Lazarus was that Luke 16 describes. He could see so far into eternity that he saw the other side. He's in hell, but yet he can see heaven. People in hell can see people in heaven. What a horror. What an eternal horror and torment. For eternity, those who forgot God entered hell's horror will be able to see heaven and those who knew, they knew who went there. The eternal horror of knowing that they could have went to heaven instead of hell will torment them forever. Where will you spend eternity, my friend? Looking from here, I'll tell you it's hell without Jesus. Hell has no exits. It's not only horror on October the 31st in hell. It's horror 365 days out of the year. In a 24 hour period, every second, there's nothing but fear and horror. Friend, you don't want to go to hell. Hell is a horror house. It's a Halloween that never ends. Hallelujah. And there's only one way to overcome this evil. There's only one way, hallelujah, to overpower this wicked place for those who are unprepared for heaven. And that's through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Romans 6.23, the Bible says, for the wages or the payment of sin is death. Hell is what it is is hell but the gift of god's eternal life through jesus christ our lord hallelujah friend today you can have eternal death in hell's horror house that has no exits where the monsters are really real they're not somebody with a mask on the freddy kruegers in hell are real that's right the jasons in hell are real what in hell do you want think about it why would you want to go to hell? Metallica and ACDC are not throwing concerts and Satan sitting on his throne with Budweiser and Jack Daniels and the demons screaming and partying around and everybody throwing down, having a great time on the fiery dance floor. Amen. With big ACs, air conditioners blowing cold air into the room. 
No, friend, even the devil's going to be tormented in hell where he'll be cast according to Revelation 20 verses 10. Do you want to be in hell forever? I don't think you do if you really consider this. That's why I ask, what in hell do you want? Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, these fallen spirits, these spirits of fear that everybody's having fun with and thinking it's child's play. Matthew 25, 41. Hell was not made for you. If you go there, you'll go there uninvited. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. Let me teach you John 3, 16 as I close today. Because the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me reveal to you the hell of John 3.16. There's a heaven of John 3.16, but there's also a hell of John 3.16. Because God so loved this world, here's how he loved it. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, hanging on that cross. Hallelujah. That cross is God saying, I love this world. I laid my life down for your sins so you be, could be forgiven and spend eternity with me in heaven. But listen, before he even says that, he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. There's the cross. There's the cross. There's his cross. That whoever believes in him, listen to this, should not perish. The word perish makes us think about a place of doom. Because hell, according to Luke 6 and 28, is not just some word. It's not just some cursed word. It's a cursed place for those who don't receive Jesus as Lord of their life, that don't believe on the blood of his cross and repent of their sins. He said that you should not perish. Before John 3, 16 gives a message from the cross of a welcome to eternal life, it gives first a warning of an eternal death, a place in hell. He said that you should not perish. In other words, God says, I'm giving my son on the cross. So if you believe on him, turn to him, you would not perish. You would not go to hell. But listen, but have everlasting life. That's heaven. How in the world can you preach John 3, 16 and not make mention of hell before you do heaven? Jesus didn't. Hallelujah. And friend, there is no heaven to gain without first there being a hell to shun. Why? Would Jesus even die on the cross if there were no hell? How can you preach the cross and never mention hell? Wow. Romans 10 and 9 said, If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You believe Jesus died for you on his cross. You believe God raised him from the dead three days later. There's the walking dead for you. <laughs> Praise God, he come out of that tomb alive. He only borrowed that grave. Why buy it when you're only going to need it three days? Praise God. He's alive, ever seated, living at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us, Hebrews 7, 25. And today he's beckoning to you. He's calling to you. And like David of old, he had horror grip his heart. Even I feel it now. It's a holy horror. And it grips my heart right now to think of people that's going to leave this world without Jesus, the Lord of their life. My friend, you'll find out if you leave this world without Jesus that Halloween in eternity without Jesus is every day. It's a real horror. Where again, it's not somebody dressed up like a devil. It's demons. It's, it's the most wickedest place and it never ends. It has no exits. It's, it's, it's a nightmare that never you wake up from. Never. It's a nightmare that's a living reality. You don't want to die without Jesus. Because without Jesus, it'll be hell. If you're ready today, call on him. Say, Lord Jesus. Come on, that's right. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you shed your blood on the cross for my sins. And I confess I've sinned. Lord God, I confess my ways have been wicked because they've not been yours. And I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I turn from my sins. I repent of them now as I believe on you and what you did on the cross and how you were raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, I'm yours. If you've said that and you've said it around this time right now and you really prayed from your heart, now I can say, Holy Halloween. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Now Halloween is really hallowed. It is really holy. Glory to God.